Hi, welcome to Yoga for Hips. So this is the um, second one in the hip series. Um, as with all of these series of opening up the body, feel free to stay a little bit longer in poses that feel good. Um, you know, getting your body into a place that feels comfortable, feels that everything's getting opened up. So um, yeah, feel free to explore in these poses and to just go with what feels best for you. Um, props that'll be helpful today, a couple of blocks if you have them, not essential if you don't, and a couple of cushions or pillows. So once you're ready, coming down to start lying on your back. In any position that feels comfortable, maybe you'd like to keep the knees bent. So you can bring the feet to the outsides of the mat and then allow the knees to kind of um, come together gently in the middle. And then arms can be wherever feels good, so down by the sides. Maybe you want to have a little opening up overhead or maybe onto the belly. So yeah, go with whatever, whatever's feeling good for you. Finding yourself into a place that feels comfortable for a few breaths. And before you start opening up the hips, maybe seeing if you're able to on your inhale, sending your breath down into your hips. And as you exhale, maybe visualizing and imagining a little bit of opening, a little bit of space. Perhaps as you're exhaling, there's room for the muscles to relax a little bit, to let go. Sometimes the hips can really be gripping and hanging on even when we think that we're relaxing everything else. So seeing if on your exhales you can allow a bit of a softening in your hips, a little bit of space. Taking a few more breaths here, breathing deep into any areas that feel tight, anywhere that's been sore. Almost every movement that the body takes ends up going through the hips. It's a really big supporting part of the body. So the hips work really, really hard all throughout the day, whether you're walking, running, sitting, gardening, whatever it might be. Taking one last deep breath in, seeing if you can find as much space and openness in that part of your body. And then allowing the eyes to open, bring in your feet to about hips width apart, bending the knees if they're not already bent. And then on your inhale, hugging your right knee into your chest, just taking a little opening for a breath. And then allowing the knee to open out as you bring the right ankle onto the left thigh. So coming into a little kind of figure four position on your back. So this might be a position that you've um, stretch out your hips in before. It's a really nice one for opening up tight hips. And it might be that keeping the left foot on the ground at the moment feels like a big enough stretch as it is. If you do want to increase the stretch, you can lift the left foot from the ground and bring the hands either interlacing behind the thigh or behind the shin. So whichever one you pick, seeing if you can still keep the head um, on the ground, keeping the shoulders fairly open. So, um, you know, no pressure to have to do a a big reach around the shins if, if you're feeling particularly tight. Um, and if you need any more on the stretch, you can bring the foot further up the leg towards the hip and that'll increase the stretch even more. So um, yeah, if you do need more, that's, that's how to get it. And then it might be that it feels good to close the eyes here and breathe into that right hip, especially if it's really, really tight. And sending your breath back to that area, imagining a bit of openness with your exhales, a bit of spaciousness. 
and seeing if you can relax and allow any holding in that area to let go for just a minute. So this is a really nice stretch that you can do um, either in the morning when you wake up or before you go to bed. And if you're ever doing any kind of opening stretches like this, especially for places like the hips, then seeing if you can be in a pose like this for an absolute minimum, you know, more than 30 seconds. Um, and if you're able to be there, you know, for a few minutes, then even better. So. Um, the longer that, that we stay in a stretch, the more the connective tissues can also start to release and relax. So these are the, you might have heard of fascia before, it's the, the layers that sort of are outside of the muscle and they can get really, really tight as well. So um, seeing if, if you can hold these, these kind of opening stretches, if you are doing them at home um, and in your own time for a little bit longer um, then maybe you're used to holding a stretch for and, and you'll just get a little bit more benefit. There'll be a little bit more opening up and um, a little bit more release. So yeah, this is a particularly nice one because you get to lie down on the floor at the same time, which is always a plus. So taking a couple more breaths here, knowing that you can always ease out or go further in if you're needing it. And then on your next exhale, bringing the left foot down to the ground, leaving the right leg where it is. And if it feels comfortable, leaving the legs exactly as they are and taking the legs over to the left. So you'll notice as you take the legs over to the left that that right foot will come down onto the ground. So almost coming into a little twist here. And if it feels good, you can open up that right arm, look over the right shoulder. So it's just getting into a slightly different area in the hips, but still keeping that shape. And you can use that left hand if you want to help open up the knee, um, if you want a bit more, or you can let the knee just relax. So, you know, you're cool here, having a, having a little bit of an explore, seeing what it feels like to make these different shapes on your mat. And taking a few breaths here. On your next inhale, gently coming back to centre. And then drawing that right knee into the chest. One breath, drawing it in. And then allowing that leg to come down to the ground. So if you want to, you can straighten that right leg, give it a little shake side to side, whatever you might need to do. And whenever you're ready, coming on to the other side. So definitely draws into your chest, give it a little hug for a, for a breath. And then allowing that knee to open up, bringing the left ankle onto the right thigh. And then your choice from here, maybe you stay with that right foot grounded, maybe that feels like a really nice opening already, or maybe choosing to lift the right foot, you can hold around the back of the thigh or the shin. So you've probably got one hip that's tighter than the other, so it might be that it felt really good with the shin last time and you want to hold around the thigh this time. So um, seeing if you can kind of feel in to what your body is telling you um, rather than feeling that it needs to be, you know, symmetrical what you're doing on both sides. 
And then having a little feel into this hip. What's going on in there? Is it tighter than the other one? Is there a bit more space? You can close the eyes if that helps you to sort of breathe into the space, working with those exhales. So on every exhale, seeing if you can relax a little bit more in that left hip, if you can breathe a little bit more space. Maybe even imagining space appearing and noticing how that feels. So this is a really nice opening stretch to do, particularly if you've got um, sciatica or if you get lower back pain. So sometimes doing these kind of hip openers on the sly gets to loosen up the lower back as well. Often we feel it in the lower back, but then we start doing hip openers and we realize, my God, my hips are really, really tight and, um, you know, everything's really connected in the body. So if the hips are really tight, um, then we often experience pain in the lower back. So um, it's a really, really beneficial thing to give the body this, this opening in the hips. Continually checking in with your breath here. And as well, checking in to see if you've Maybe gone back to holding the hip at any point, if you've been tightening anything. Our bodies get so used to these little patterns of holding and if you've been feeling uncomfortable, then sometimes it will it'll kind of hold on to little bits of tightness without you even knowing. So seeing if you can really send your breath down into that left hip. See if you can create a little bit of space down there. And then on your next exhale, allowing that right foot to come to the ground, leaving the legs exactly as they are, taking them over to the right hand side, left foot touches the ground, and then maybe bringing the left arm out, gaze over the left hand. You can use that right hand to open the hip a little more if you want. And with any of these classes, if you ever want to pop on a bit of music or anything like that in the background, feel free. I always have music in my face-to-face -face classes, so it's weird not having it with these recorded ones. Um, but it all gets a bit complicated with music licensing and stuff once you start doing things online. So if you do want any music recommendations, I can um, send you through my Spotify playlist that I use for class or um, you know, any other recommendations. And equally, if you've just got stuff that you really like, then feel free to pop it on. Taking a couple more breaths here, maybe noticing how this sort of stretch feels a little bit different from the last one. Maybe it feels um, more open, maybe there are new areas of tightness that you're discovering. Being curious about what's going on in your body, what it's feeling like for you. And then inhaling, head coming back to centre, bringing those legs back up if that's feeling good. Taking a little hug of the knee into the chest. 
and then bringing the foot back down. So whatever feels good here, you can straighten out that leg, you can take a little rock side to side, take a few windscreen wipers. So have a little feel into your body, see what it might need. And then whenever you're ready, coming up to seated. So you might want to roll up to seat, um, you might want to come up onto elbows, or maybe come over onto the side and then pushing up with your hands. So, you know, whatever feels, whatever feels good. Coming up, bringing the feet to the side and finding yourself into an all fours position. So hands are coming underneath your shoulders, knees underneath the hips, drawing the spine long. And then bringing the right foot forward in between the hands. So coming into a sort of a low lunge position. And it might be you want to scoot that back leg back a little bit, allowing the left hip to sink down. And this is where if you've got your blocks, um, you're welcome to grab them. So if you'd like to, um, you can use them so you can kind of sit up a little bit taller here, sink that left hip down. And if you haven't got the blocks, then you're welcome to stay with the hands on the ground. Um, allowing the left hip to sink down, opening up on the front of that left hip. And feeling into how that part of your body is feeling. Taking a couple more breaths wherever you are, whether you're on the blocks or whether you're down a bit lower. On your exhale, taking a rock backwards. So if you've got blocks, you'll bring the blocks with your hands. And if you haven't got blocks, walk in your hands um, backwards. If you've got your cushions or whatever and you just want to bring the, the ground a little bit closer, you can always pop those under your hands. Lifting the right toes up, getting a stretch and an opening in the back of the right leg. So we'll do a bit of rocking backwards and forwards here. Um, so opening the front of the left hip as we come forward and then opening the back of the right leg um, as we go back. So as I said at the start, you know, if it feels like you want to stay in one place for a little longer, um, you're welcome to always pause the video or, you know, you can come back and, and do um, any of these poses again on your own at home. And otherwise, I'll just offer up some suggestions of how you can feel into the legs and the hips and um, go with what feels good. So on an inhale, if you have got the blocks, walking forwards, otherwise walking forwards with your hands, taking one more opening through the front of the hip. And then exhaling walking the blocks back. So this is a bit more of an active um, stretch, but you can absolutely slow it down and hold each one for longer if that feels good. And then walking back forwards again whenever you're ready. If you've got blocks, taking them off to one side, bringing the left hand to the ground, and then stepping the foot over to the edge of the mat a bit so you can also bring the right hand down inside of the foot. So the two hands are inside of the foot and the foot's near the edge of the mat. And from here, coming into lizard stretch. So maybe if this already feels really quite intense on the front of your hip, so I know my hips are quite tight today, it might be that you feel actually staying up on, um, on your hands is good here. You can have the toes turn out to the side slightly if that feels better on your hips. Um, and if you'd like to, then there's an option to come down from here. So only if it doesn't feel like too much, if you've already got a big stretch there, um, I encourage you to stay on your hands. So not overstretching and, and just feeling into what's good. If you have got a bit more space, you're welcome to come down onto elbows. Um, and if you want something halfway in between, then this is what your, your pillows and your blocks will be really great for, is that you can kind of create yourself a, a midway shelf if you if you want it. So yeah, if it feels good to have those, um, the toes out to the side or even to roll slightly onto the side of the toes, that'll open up more on the right side you can. Or you can keep the foot forward if you want to just focus on opening up the left hip. 
So having a little feel about what position might be best for you here and seeing if you can find somewhere where it might be comfortable to hang out for a couple of breaths maybe. On your next inhale, bringing the right foot in so that the right hand can come back outside of that foot again. And then rocking back slightly, giving yourself space to come back into all fours. And from here, whatever feels good, so maybe you want to take a couple of circles with the hips, that's quite a, a big hip opener there, it can feel really intense. So whatever it is that you might need, to look after your body, to provide a little bit of looseness. Now, whenever you're ready, coming on to the other side. So left foot comes forward in between your hands, starting off in low lunge, scooting that foot back if you want to get a more intense opening on the right front of the hip. And then if you've got your blocks, you're welcome to grab those. Come into a more upright position. And taking a few breaths, starting to open up the front of that hip. So this is often a part of the body that gets a little bit forgotten when we think about hips and lower backs and all of that, especially with lower backs, you know, they can be so uncomfortable that the thought is about getting into the sort of the site of pain. But actually opening up the front of the hips really, really helps the lower back to release as well. And particularly if you're doing a lot of sitting or if you're doing a lot of running, um, anything that's kind of either working this area hard or kind of crunching it up and shortening it, then it's really important to have a bit of open in here. So option is you exhale to take that rock back if that felt good last time. Or you can stay where you are if that's better. Lifting the front toes up and seeing if you can keep your chest fairly open. So option to take that rock back and forward one more time or you can stay in any of those poses for a bit longer um, if that's feeling better for you. So if you are then coming forwards into the um, rocking back and forth, then coming back into your low lunge. And on an exhale, rocking back one more time, opening up the back of that left leg. So if it feels more comfortable, you're always welcome to keep toes down in this one. So again, feeling into your body, um, where you need the opening, what's feeling best for you. So these are kind of classes where you can really explore and feel that you can uh, move organically, where you can listen in. And then whenever you're ready on an inhale, coming forward, bringing any props off to one side. An option to come into lizard pose again. So if you're coming into lizard, bringing the right hand down, then scooting the left foot over, bringing the left hand inside of the left foot. Option if you want to turn the toes out to roll over onto the edge of that foot if that was good last time, or you can keep the foot straight. And then seeing what feels best for you here. So maybe staying on the hands, maybe that's already feeling like a really nice juicy opening in the front of the hips. Maybe you want to grab your cushions, come down part way. So this is where things like cushions and, and, and blocks are great because you can find yourself a little platform that's exactly where works for your body, that feels really good for you. 
then you don't have to worry about overstretching anything or hurting yourself by accident by pushing your body too far. So if you do have the space, then of course, do feel free to come down to elbows. And then you can allow the, the head to go soft if you're down to your elbows. And breathe it into anywhere that feels tight, anywhere that's maybe needing a little bit of letting go. So option here at any time to come a bit further out or to sink a bit further in, taking a couple more breaths wherever you are. And when you're ready to come out with care, bringing that left foot back in a little bit, left hand comes down outside of the foot, making your way back to all fours, and then taking whatever opening feels good. So maybe it's those circles, um, you know, maybe it's, I don't know, lifting a leg, opening the hip, um, taking little circles with the hip while the foot's lifted. So, you know, have a little play here, see what feels really nice. And then whenever you're ready, bringing the feet to the outside of the body, coming down to finish, lying down on your back. So making your way down and whatever feels good, you can use elbows, nice and supportive. Bending the knees, hugging the right knee into the chest, straightening out the left leg. And option here to come into a little spinal twist. So if you'd like to come into the twist, then right arm comes out to the side, gaze over the right hands. And then exhaling, guiding the left knee over the body, uh, sorry, the right knee over the body to the left hand side. You can come up onto the left hip if that feels good. So the reason I've popped this little spinal twist in at the end is just so that the spine gets to do a little bit of opening and a little bit of relaxing as well. Spinal twists are really, really healthy for the spine. So if you have been getting any lower back or any hip pain, this is a really nice opener for that part of the body. And it may be that as you come into this spinal twist, you also get a little bit of opening through the right hip as well, a little bit of a two for one. Taking one more deep breath in here. On an inhale, allowing your head to come back to centre, rolling onto your back and then drawing both feet in, bending the knees and then drawing the left knee into your chest, interlacing fingers around the shin, right leg comes out to the ground and then holding on to that right shin with your, uh, sorry, with your, holding on to the left shin with your right hand and opening your left arm out to the side, gaze over the left hand. As you exhale, draw in that leg across the body to the right, come up onto the right hip if that feels good. Take in a spinal twist on this side. And breathing into the body, the openness in the chest. Breathing into your spine. Breathing into that left hip.
And taking one more deep breath here. See if you can really let go in your hip spaces. And then allowing your head to come back to center, rolling onto your back. And maybe you want to take a little windscreen wiper side to side. Maybe you want to hug the knees into the chest. So whatever's feeling nice and releasing. And then coming to finish in a position that feels good for you. So it may be that you want to bring the legs out to the ground and really open up the body. Just allow it to completely ah, relax, melt into the floor. It might be that if you've got a wall nearby, you want to allow you, uh, put your legs up the wall and um, that can be a really nice position. Um, so whatever, whatever feels good for you, whatever your body's needing. Finding yourself somewhere that can feel cosy, where the body can be open and relaxed. And maybe if it feels comfortable, allowing your eyes to close. And seeing how, how your body feels maybe different now. How do your hips feel? How does your lower back feel? Checking in with your body and seeing what that practice has been like for you. Maybe what poses felt particularly helpful. And seeing if you can allow your body to melt down into the ground. Maybe the hips feel like the heaviest point, the grounding point. In yoga, the hips are seen as the root of the body. And it makes sense given that all of our Movement really goes through the hips. The hips are the part that ground us when we're sitting, when we're lying. So if you have time, I encourage you to take a few more minutes to chill out whatever position you've decided to be in. Maybe you want to pop on some relaxing music, maybe the Shavasana tune on my website, maybe something of your own. Giving your body a few minutes of being open and rested before your hips probably go and start working very hard again. I hope this class has felt really beneficial, helping your body to open up, maybe release in a bit of tension. And I look forward to practicing with you again, working with you in more of these nice hip opening sequences. And I hope you have a great day. Namaste.